Hey everybody, Phil here for WM Experts, and we are back with the third annual Smartphone Round Robin. And I'm sitting next to Kevin from Crackberry, or Crackberry Kevin, or... What, call me what you want, just don't call <laughs> me late for dinner. That's, All right. That's what I have. And we're sitting here looking <laughs> at the BlackBerry Bold 9700. That's right. And the Storm 2. That's right. And first, let's take a quick look at... What did you guys use last year? You used the This was the device in the Round Robin last year, so that's the Bold 9000. Mm-hmm. That was RIM's first sort of like all-in-one device where they had 3G and Wi-Fi and GPS and, and no real, you know, uh, nothing left out. And then the Storm 1 came out. Storm 1 is their first effort at a touchscreen, so it, it introduced the uh, the innovative SurePress technology with the screen that clicks. Screen clicks. You know, that's not awful. It's not awful, but it wasn't, um, you know, it got beat up a lot. Mm -hmm. I think good, good concept, but not quite the... Um, polished consumer product it, it should have been or needed to be maybe so this year we people. this year we have the bold 9000 and you can see the 9700 or 9700 yeah. they dropped a little trackball in favor of optical yeah optical trackpad which works pretty well yeah it's responsive it's a little um looks a little nicer mm -hmm. and i think the big the big push for this was durability no moving parts no moving parts the track i mean it pushes in and out but it's not like the trackball where where that was the highest you know wear item and mm -hmm. number one need to replace uh, a piece on, on a blackberry historically all right so this is a blackberry and there's one thing and one thing only that we get blackberries for and that's just a bang out email Ouch. faster than the speed of light not, right well not quite but i mean that's it's definitely the priority is mm -hmm. productivity and communication hey. Here's my old Q9H. This okay. thing's old. It, it's three yeah, years that's, old. I actually, when I flew into uh, into Orlando, a guy on the airplane was rocking one of these. Still. I, I will say I miss it. Yeah. I, I miss banging out emails. And as we've all been talking this weekend, a lot of us have said, you know, we don't really give BlackBerry a fair chance because we love just banging out emails. And, and Dieter and I have loved the Q9H for a long time. Right. Why do you think that is? Why do you think we just have well, an aversion to it? I think a lot of people, I mean... If an aver I don't know if it's an aversion necessarily, mm -hmm. but I think there's, you know, RIM has done so much more to the device now to make it consumer friendly. You know, their media player is a lot better than it was. I mean, it never released really to have one. Um, the the web browser is still where it suffers a little bit, and there's third party alternatives like Opera Mini. There's Bolt Browser. There's Sky Skyfire in development, um, and RIM is going to have their own WebKit browser soon that they announced. So they're doing all the things, but I think what's happening is you know the more RIM consumerifies the device, mm. the more the com competitive marketplace is also changing. And RIM hasn't really been the first to lead a consumer movement. So because of that, there's sort of, uh, you know, you pigeonhole them back into, into email a little bit and, and enterprise. Sure. But for people who pick up the phone, I think they'll find there's a lot of apps now in App World, which launched uh, uh, April 1st of, of 09. Um, before that, you could still get apps, and you still can from from third party stores. So, mm -hmm. you know, the Crackberry App Store has been selling apps since the day it launched. You know, almost three years ago now. Um, and there's good apps. There's lots of streaming audio apps. You know, the device multitasks. You know, a lot of the things we're we're seeing now in advertising from Droid does. I mean, both Windows Mobile and both BlackBerry have been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. uh, just maybe the consumer mindset wasn't there to, to that you need to market those things as broadly and directly as, as you do now. How do you type a period on this? Spacebar. Spacebar. Oh. It's very intuitive. I get very upset when I have to look for a period button. <laughs> it's, it's, non, it's unnecessary. All right. Uh, which browser is this we're looking at here? Is this that... is the native BlackBerry browser. Okay. So we'll see. Do you have a mobile template or it's going to pull up the full site? We do. We're pulling up the full site. We'll see what happens okay. there. And then we can, we can pull up the mobile yeah. page and see what that looks like. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's getting better for rendering. I mean... Uh, it's a different experience too between doing it. You know, I can pull it up on the Storm Two here, mm -hmm. and we can compare. We can show off the the Storm Two's keyboards while it's loading. So you have a a full keyboard. You can change to the traditional BlackBerry keyboard that the Pearl had, mm -hmm. two two letters on a button, or you can turn sideways, and uh, have your full keyboard there. All right, I'm giving up on that. Is Let's it not try. working? So that was on uh, AT and T. We're roaming. We'll try. We'll try on Verizon here and see which carrier wins. How do I make a slash? Uh, slash Alt. Alt. is... Uh, there we go. M dot W M X. Okay, Verizon's having Birds. a little more success here. Dot com. What do you do when you want to make a space? Backspace and hit space bar. Yeah. Uh, but why would you do that in a URL? Well, in a URL <laughs> you wouldn't. But when you're typing normally... 
Oh, yeah. So I pulled up uh, pulled up the mobile site, and here the storm's loading the full site. Full site. So that's Verizon 3G. I mean, the rendering will the be... The screen doesn't work. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I said it to, uh, in another round robin video, but this year I bought my mom a BlackBerry Bold 9000, mm -hmm. you know, bigger keyboard for her kind of thing. And what's the first thing she does? She taps the icons on the screen, <laughs> and I'm like, no! It's not what you do. Well, show me some more of the storm. Okay, Storm 2. Sure, so Storm 2, I mean, the big difference between uh, Storm 1 Storm 2, largely hardware, because in the end, uh, this year that RIMS rolled out, and they're in the process of rolling out OS 5.0, it's very incremental change to the end user. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you pick up a BlackBerry, an older one and a newer one, it feels the same. Right. Um, what happens now, though, is the hardware in this addresses a lot of the problems that the first Storm had. So, in turn, oh, there's a site, we'll pull it up. Uh, what they switched to from Storm 1 here, that was a mechanical button that mm -hmm. doesn't turn off. Now it's controlled by electric buttons under the screen. So when it's turned off, if you press that, it's rock hard. Yeah. Power the device on. Oh. And now you start to it click. It allows you to click it. It, yeah. allows it allows you to click. And uh, there you can see the rendering job on it. And you can zoom in, zoom out within the browser. So next to the, here's the Touch Pro 2. So <laughs> get the idea of the screen sizes. They're yeah. pretty it's close. Not too bad. Yeah. It's. Uh, this will be, I guess, well, 480 by 360, but in this orientation, 360 by 480. Touch Pro 2 is 480 by 800. Okay, that's 800. Yes. <laughs> but you can see the browser's, you know, more responsive, still a little slow in rendering when you when you start to scroll and redraw. Getting better, but I think WebKit browser is going to be the big difference. Let's show, uh, let's show it next to the, to the Monster HD2. Yeah. Look at that. No comparison, but nothing compares to this right now. Yeah, crazy. Um, and then in terms of the Storm 2, I mean, it's the traditional BlackBerry experience converted to touchscreen. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the reason RIM uses this SurePress method is kind of like when you use a trackpad. You scroll to where you want to go and you click in. That's what you're doing here. So you can you can actually... It's, it's really not unintuitive. It's No, no, it's not. I mean, the only thing I'd say you find is, let's say for things like typing, mm -hmm. um, your brain types faster than your fingers move. Right. So you already know what letter you're pressing before your finger touches the screen and right. clicks in. So separating the movement there, it almost makes no difference because you're already like click, 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 click. If you make a mistake, you're making the mistake yeah. even though you're, you're forced to click. But what it does give you is great rhythm on typing mm -hmm. because it's, you know, it's like a keyboard, click, click, click. You're not lifting your finger to press. It's kind of making it a more natural typing motion. Uh, still not as easy to type on as probably a full physical keyboard, sure. but I think it's preference, and if you invest some time into it, uh, it's a very usable device. 3.2 megapixel camera uh, with flash, video recording, so I mean, everything you'd expect. It feels good in the hand. That's solid. It's, it's a dense device. Yeah. It's definitely it's a little heavier than uh, than iPhone and, and that. I think it's you know 5.6 ounces or 7 ounces, something like that. Is a phone, works fine. Yeah, as yeah, phone, works phone is fine. Uh, works fo fine as a phone. <laughs> one of the big things that was missing on the first storm that they put in this one was a proximity sensor mm -hmm. when you're on the calls. Uh, so with this one, you know, you could be on a call, and uh, your ear would literally act like a finger, and you could like click in against your ear yeah. and and you know put it on mute or, or speakerphone without meaning to. Whereas this one, you know, it, it turns off the screen. The screen goes hard when when you're on calls. Um, so yeah, it's it's an interesting time for RIM. I mean, they, they just came out of the BlackBerry Developer Conference. They made a lot of good announcements. So a lot of what happened in OS 5.0, it, it basically laid the groundwork in the operating system for all these new APIs and, and things they've opened up. Um, OpenGL support is, is now on this device, and the APIs have been opened up. So basically, you're going to see 3D games coming mm -hmm. out now, uh, some more iPhone-like on the gaming experience. And, and moving ahead, I think RIM's in a great position now. Uh, but they have some things they still need to do, and, and one thing you know we're seeing is, uh, and and on your Windows mobile devices too, with uh, you know the Sense UI and everything, mm -hmm. is sort of just more sexy, more widgety type things happening, whereas this experience is still a little bit you know launch applications. There's yeah. icons, click launch, ag launch an app, launch an app. So I think that's one of the things that maybe we'll see happen in the near future, or hope to see in the near future, and 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 not losing any of the core uh, benefits of, you know, communicate, communicate, pound out emails, stay yeah. in touch with people. Always on, always connected. Good battery life. Good deal. Thank you very much, Kevin. My pleasure.